G'day viewers, welcome to Wimble Train. It's scale scenes time again. Now we're working in N scale here today. Now if we have a look at the scale scenes website there on the screen, we're going to be um, constructing the low relief high street fronts and the low relief high street backs, T005 and T005A. Because in the instructions it says you can put these two kits back to back to make uh, like uh, one big building so I've made a start on facade 1 and facade 2 as you can see on screen from the scale scenes website it's the first two buildings out of five so we're just going to concentrate on these ones first now one thing I have um, like this is facade 1 and this is facade 2 and I've already messed up a little bit but it probably won't matter because um, not planning on lighting up the inside is the doors should be on the right hand side like these two should have been back to back and the blue ones should have been back to back but somehow I got them mixed up and uh, glued them side by side but that's okay so another thing I noticed on the website photo and how I've done the uh, side walls a bit different like on the website they only using this side wall and not this one so they're only putting one side wall between the two buildings but I've decided to put both side walls and that way it looks a bit more balanced that's just personal preference you can do it like the photo shows or you can do it this way now in the I think it's the kit for the back part of the um, buildings you do get a wider sidewall cover layer which is good so that way you don't um, you're not having two separate pieces for the back it's one big piece now one thing to note is you can see here I've cut these two pieces out separately when you cut them out don't cut it down the middle just cut around the edge and you have one solid piece but that's okay in my case I just glued it together it seems to have worked so that when we put these two together we can have this wall on that side and that one on that side and then that'll be our first two buildings we just have to build the fronts and backs and the, and the roof fix up the chimneys and then do the little shop area down the bottom so that'll be next we've glued some of those pieces together and uh, we'll come back when we've got a bit more progress on that right here we are back again so so far what we've done is we're working on facades one two and three now we've got facades one and two glued on back to back with the um, corresponding side walls in there so that's uh, facade one and that'll be facade two and then if we um, have a look here that's facade one so that's the front which will sit on there and the back on the back then facade two that will be this one and then that's the back of facade two and we've started on working on um, facade three next step for these ones is to glue the windows on the back now on the uh, these are scale scenes scale glaze windows now if you go to the website it gives you a list of what you need for each particular kit so I'll find the appropriate ones if I've got them otherwise I have to order some more and then we'll um, put them on those but I think I've got enough to cover those for the moment so one uh, interesting detail on these kits so hopefully you can see it there it's like a faded sign on the side that's part of the print when you print it out looks quite good so if we take a closer look at one of the front facade pieces this is made up of two components there's a cover sheet which is just a printed sheet just on normal printer paper and then there's just a bit of thin card behind it which this is glued onto and of course you've got to cut out all the um, 
windows. And then when you put the cover sheet on, you can uh, just uh, wrap it round the back there. That's how that works. So quite straightforward. Another thing to note with these kits is um, when you cut the pieces out before you glue them together, it's a good idea to test fit them. Like for example, when I put these side pieces on the backing piece, I already had these floor pieces glued on. But what happened was these were sitting proud of the side, so the, they were sticking out. And of course it has to be all level, so you can put the facade on nice and evenly. So there's something to check before you actually do it, glue it together that is, because I ended up having to sand these down. So yeah, if you can get all those level before you even glue everything, it'll save you a lot of time later on down the track. So we've moved on now, as you can see we've got facade 1 and facade 2 here. I'll just give you a bit of a closer look at that, what I've done there. I've put a couple of shops at the bottom, a uh, hobby shop and a record shop. So I can bring that up, give you a nice close view. So with that, um, we've still got the backs to do, of course. And that's what these two pieces here are. And then we've got the floor and the shop displays. So the floor will go along there. And then the shop displays in those windows for those two. So moving on to facade three, remember there's five buildings to do. So currently I'm doing three. Now this is uh, facade three, and that's the back. So we've glued the side walls on there and all the floors in between. And then on the front of that, we'll go these three pieces like that. And then we'll um, have another shop at the bottom of that one. And then the front here, it's got the, uh, we've put the windows and everything on the front here. So that will go there like so and then these two will sit back to back like so and of course when you put this piece on it'll sit up there like so so we'll continue on and we'll finish these three first and then we'll start on the other two because the other two are very similar to facade one and two these ones, but just um, a little bit bigger. See you soon. So as we continue to work on facade one here and facade two there, the fronts are all done. Now if we have a look around the back, we've done a, the back of facade one, as you can see there. So this section here we've all done. And we've still got facade two to do. Now I just want to go over and show you the instructions. For this because um, it seems that the instructions for the front, the fronts of the high street and the backs are, are printed opposite. But I'll explain that when we look at the instructions on the computer. Here we have the instructions for facade 1 to 5. So we've got facade 1 here on the left 
and then facade two there. These are the ones we're working on at the moment. Now that's how we've built it. So we've basically copied that facade one, facade two. So this is the instructions for the back. So we've got facade one there and facade two there. And I'll show you what I mean by these are reversed. If we get our model that we built, we've got facade one there and facade two there. And it's the front. So if we turn that around, you can see what's happened here. Is that um, facade one's over here, facade two there. So in this diagram, facade one should really be on this side and facade five on that side. Now it's probably not a huge problem, but the fact that when I went to do this back part, I've basically copied these walls here. I've put the ducting the other way, but I've basically copied that and I've ended up with this wall over here and this wall over here, when in fact, if you look at the other side of it, the fronts, this wall should be on that side and vice versa. Then if we look at uh, facade two, when I put the back on facade two, which is this one, it's going to end up looking like that. It's going to be that way. I don't have a choice with that one. I can't reverse the walls, whereas I could with that one because of this roof line. It's got to go on that way. But like I said, in the end, it probably doesn't really matter too much. The roofs are on now, so we've done that, and uh, the next part's to do the chimneys. Now this is proving to be a little bit fiddly and tricky, not so much for the end ones, but for the middle ones, the way I did it, I thought would be better, but anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute. But basically, these end pieces, they just come in individual front and back pieces, and there's a few I've destroyed previously. Now, yeah, there's a join there. I don't know whether you can pick it up, pick it up there on the camera. So it's joined in the middle there, and around this side, you need to get it so that um, the flashing meets in the middle. So you've got to cut one of these to suit. Previously in the video, I mentioned I put the extra wall. Now, it probably would have been easy if I didn't stick these together from the start if i just built them individually would have been easier to do this because now the way i've done it which is different to the instructions i'm going to have two chimneys side by side here so what's happened now is when i've gone to do the brickwork around there half of it's got to be match this brick and half of it's got to match that brick so i've had to put this piece on there that one there and I had to cut it short and wrap it around and feed it in between, if you can see. So it has to go down the middle there. So the same with this one, I basically just cut that off because you won't see what's in there. Just enough to get it to wrap around and feed into there. Sorry, I'll bring it closer. So get this, cut it off, feed it in between the two chimneys. Now, when it comes to the tops, I'm not sure what that's going to look like, but I guess we'll find out. It's too late to pull it all apart now. So here's the example of uh, the end, so that basically I've cut that, cut one of those, so that the flashing all meets up in the middle, and then I've just got these two pieces that I just wrap around there. 
Now what I found is when I wrap around there, like that, it's little, hang on, if I hold this all together, this little gap underneath. So I've, I've stuffed up somewhere. So there's a gap there. So what I did on the other end is I just patched it up with a bit of flashing across there. Doesn't look too bad. So when all the flashing goes in here, that'll all sort of kind of match. Because I'll use the same colour there for the flashing. It's in the kit, they actually give you this extra flashing. So that should turn out alright. So there we go. And that's the backs. Carry on. Facade 1 and facade 2 almost done now. So we've done all the front of it and the back. It's all completed. We've got the chimneys on. We just need to put the chimney pots on top. Which I have here. That are 3D printed. Painted. And then I'll just have to cut them off their bases and put them up top. So now that facade 1 and facade 2 are almost completed, just uh, like I said, need the chimney pots. We'll put that aside for now and we can uh, concentrate on facade 3, which I'll bring into picture now. So we've got the, uh, that's the back of it. It's the back. And uh, that's the front and the, there's going to be a shop underneath here, which we've uh, started doing the front for. So that bit there, that'll just sit on there. The sign above there, and that'll finish that one. Plus the fact that um, you can see here, because of the, the front and the back glue together, the um, some reason the roof's printed out different colours. Plus you can see a line there. So what I'm going to do is get a piece of this um, scale scenes red tiles can read it and we'll just cut one piece to cover the whole lot so we'll just stick it over the top of that and that'll uh, make it look a lot better than it is now so on facade three now we've put the uh, single roof we just put that uh, sheet of uh, roof tiles over the top of the existing roof to cover that join so that all looks uh, very good and we've put the uh, shop entry at the bottom and the shop window and later on we'll uh, fit the interior so that'll just sit alongside those like that now there is one thing I wanted to point out with uh, the roofs on on these um, facade 1 and facade 2 is uh, back in where the roof goes down here if we can see you can see that little gap in there now on this one, I think the roof's gone a bit low down into the front of the building, if you know what I mean. Like, I mean, it's angled down too much. So what had happened, and, and you, you know, I guess you can't really see it, but when the roof came down to the front of the building here, you could see the uh, white card of the back of the front of the building because the roof came down too low. So I'll just try and show you with this roof how um, I had a bit of an issue on the um, facade one and facade two. So if we use this piece of scrap as our roof, just for this demonstration, that basically sits on top there like so. And then this front piece should sit flush with the top of this. And the roof should be pretty much flush or maybe just a little bit over so then you can put the capping on top of the wall here but what happened with facade one and facade two this was too high and i had rather large gap if i can show that i had rather large gap there that you could see and all i did was cover it in uh, the roof tiles i just put another strip on the back there so you couldn't see it and it looks okay now but just something to pay attention to that you want this fairly almost flush with that so you've just got enough room to um, put the tiling on top or the capping you don't want it like this 
because then that's not doesn't look right at all and you'll see it so you want that fairly tight so I've been gluing down these window sills as you can see here these are all done the, this one's yet to be done and a couple at the top here haven't been done yet now what happens is when you stick this down and you go and fold it over this front part tends to lift off so what I do is apply glue to the back of the whole windowsill stick it down there then I get a scrap piece of timber just a tiny piece then I put it like so let's lift that up so what I do is put it on the bottom there try and get a close up like that and hold that down and then I'll bring it a bit closer and then I'll fold the top of the window over Now I've run into a bit of an issue with facade number four and the fitting of the shop front towards the bottom we can see here if I line up everything as it should be if we then put the shop front on and slide it up the actual protrusion of the uh, shop front door actually hits on the floor above so as you can see there's a couple of marks there so what we need to do is uh, cut that little section out so that the um, inset door will actually fit inside that. So there's the cut out for the shop front now as I described before the problem we had. So now the shop front should just slide in there like so. So now it all sits flush how it should be. So I've got facades 4 and 5 well on their way here now. So that's uh, facade 4. It's got the shop at the bottom. This is None of this is glued on at this stage. Just loosely fitted because we've still got to put the windows on facade 5 here. So that's what we've got there. As you can see we had the other facade 1, 2 and 3 there almost all done just some chimneys put on top now with four and five what I did is I'll just remove all that stuff off the front I've done it as per the instructions now and only put one wall in between the two bring it down there and then uh, they'll just sit side by side like that So we're going to take a little bit of a break from building and have a look at some of the tools and techniques I use quickly. So as you can see in front of me there's some tools that I use and some I don't. Now this is one I don't use because I find this flat handle I just cannot control the cut properly. That's for me. Other people seem to be able to use these ones without issue. It's a personal choice. I prefer this one for the longer bigger cuts and this one for the finer details cutting out windows all that sort of stuff now this is just a Tamiya one well it's actually rebranded it's actually Alpha it says on here and that just uses the uh, these normal craft blades so I find that's good for small cutouts of windows and that give you uh, precise control square is always handy some little files tweezers and some sanding sticks this is just like a nail file type thing and this is one purchased from a hobby shop I've got a few of these in different uh, 
upgrades this is a fine one so another thing I find useful is um, to clamp things together is these little pegs you can buy in your two dollar shops or pound shop whatever you want to call it um, they're small and good for end scale and uh, for bigger things you can use these or uh, even what I use is uh, clothes pegs they come in quite handy they're quite good too to use I'll just show you this building I've got at the moment use rubber bands anything pretty much to um, hold things together now a lot of times you can you're doing a flat piece and you can just put a weight on it but in this case it's a bit hard to do that when I was gluing this side piece on so I've just use the little clamps and some rubber bands just to hold this bit on now in terms of glue I use a couple of different ones um, you can use PVA I use this rocket card glue it's if you want something to stick together and hold pretty quickly this has got a sort of a low drying time not depending on the weather of course and but for most of the other things that I do I use the uh, glue stick I just tried a couple of different brands and preferred this one this gives you a lot of um, working time if you've got to line pieces up you can just uh, maneuver that really easily now the other thing with the glue sticks is uh, when they run out don't chuck them away because what you can do is um, even though I can't use that on a bit of card you can always uh, if you need to uh, glue up any small areas or anything you can just dig that out with your toothpick there's a lot of good glue still in there so hold on to those don't just run and throw them away so next up I just want to show how I um, glue my windows in now here's a, the back of one of the high street um, building so what I do is I get a little bit of this rocket card glue I squirt it out onto a surface or a little plastic tray or whatever then I'll apply that around the window and then rather than grab my window and try and put it on there I find the easiest way put your window down there line it up carefully and you'll get pretty good results a lot easier to line up than trying to put the window on the cardboard now another thing that it can come in handy is these little magnetic holders so just got two bits of card here so you can sort of pretend that's a corner of a building and they just um, magnetically you've probably seen all these magnetically clamp around your building there's those ones and then there's these other ones you can get for um, internal walls when you've got a T wall coming off you can use that so you've got a wall there and a wall there and a wall there you can use those they come in handy so when you're cutting out your pieces from your uh, card or if it's just a printed out cover sheet or something just on paper try to always cut on the outside of the piece so put your um, ruler like so and then just uh, cut across like that try and avoid doing this because if you go with your knife in your slip you're going to ruin your piece and you have to start again not a good idea now the other thing also is particularly on the heavier card is when you line up your cut like that just do light strokes across and that'll give the uh, knife a nice groove to follow as you go down because if you try and start by pressing really hard particularly on thicker card you, chances are you might go offline so just do it lightly and give it a nice groove and then that'll um, give you a nice cut at the end of the day and one other thing I want to show you when you're gluing up um, the uh, scale scenes paper sheets to the card and you clamp it down always a good idea to put um, some baking paper around it so you put your uh, glued card and uh, printout in there close it clamp it down or we'll put weights on it I should say and that way um, it won't stick to your um, weights and stuff. It comes out easily.
So we can go back now to uh, building the high street fronts and backs. As you can see here, I've got a few uh, other projects on the go as well. But we'll uh, now concentrate back onto the high street. So here we are back again working on facades 4 and 5. I've run into another issue with card thickness this time. Now, the shop front for this side says to use these two pieces and I've glued them onto the appropriate card thickness that it says in the instructions. When I put those together and put them in there, it's too wide. Hopefully you can see it, it's actually going to hang over the front. So that's just following what the instruction says. So I've redone this thicker part. This I think this is done on a one millimeter card. I've redone that to a thinner piece. So then I'll just um, stick that on there. It's a lot thinner now. And then that'll fit in there very nicely. So you won't, it won't um, won't be too high, too proud of the front of the building. It'll be level to where it should be. So that's uh, one thing there. So it doesn't hurt in these kits um, to vary your card width because I find that it's not always 100% right. Like another example is for some of the roofs. Sometimes I find what they suggest a bit too thin so when you stick it on you get a bit of sag and that so I'll just use a card that's a little bit thicker and it just gives it a bit of rigidity so yeah that's what I do I, I vary the card uh, sizes I use not just using the three that they suggest but that's uh, just happened over time and all the ones I've built and I've, um, like some kits have been fine with the standard um, thicknesses of cards but I know I've had a couple of things on this one where the card thickness doesn't seem quite right uh, to what I want anyway and uh, yeah so I just change it as I go not a real big drama like I mean you can print these out as many times as you like so uh, you can redo them and get them right. Facade 4 and 5 coming along quite nicely here. This is the fronts. And we started putting the roof there on this one. And we've got the shops in place. Just some signs to put in along here. If we have a look around the back. The backs are all done. So all you have to do now is uh, to finish off the roof. And the chimneys and then we should be able to put it together with the other three facades and see how it all looks So pretty much finished all the buildings now so the next step here now is to put them on a base before I put them on the layout now I've got a base here of one millimeter card now you can see there's um, various different patterns there and that's for the floors in uh, each shop so I've stuck those on top there and this is just a concrete texture which will be mainly for the yards at the back so I've already glued down facades four and five here to the uh, base now the other ones will just uh, add in one at a time glue them in one at a time and line them all up so the next one here will be facade three and then facades one and two will go there and then another building that I've built as well is a uh, corner shops kit and that will sit on the end like that and then in front of all that, once it's on the layout, we'll then add some paving, a footpath, if you want to call it that. Like so. And then uh, that should be it. So 
that's pretty much it for this video it's gone on for a bit i uh, hope you enjoyed it and i hope you got something out of building these scale scenes kits this one's taken quite a lengthy amount of time to do myself so i've just done a bit at a time very slowly so this is john at wimble train saying thanks for watching once again enjoy your model railways and uh, we'll see you next time bye for now